What's up, running fans, jumping fans, stowing fans, all around athletics fans. Welcome to Talking in Ovals. I'm Alex Cuesta. My partner in crime over there was the guest of honor at the New York City Marathon Legends Dinner this past week. Dave Hyatt, what's going on, brother? Well, I mean, I'm not sure I was the guest of honor. That was Rod, <laughs> that was Rod Dixon, but what an honor to be invited there. Thank you, Jeff Benjamin. Thank you, Scott Ryder. Um the chance to be at that dinner and meet so many legends was absolutely amazing. I'm going to put it up now. I got my signed Dave Waddle card. It says to Dave from Dave Waddle. <laughs> I met Bob Beeman, who also was there. I met Rod Dixon. I met just so many amazing, wonderful hum- uh, people. The The dinner was amazing. The tribute show was absolutely astonishing. Like, it was just such a privilege to be there and then to just ah, oh, and I, I can't forget one of my favorite people that I met. I was up till four o'clock in the morning in the hotel lobby talking to Matt Centrowitz Sr. and his <laughs> wife. It was I mean, what a cool guy that is. That guy is the most down to earth, like real dude that you ever want to meet. He was just an amazing human being. I'm reading his book now, like father, like 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 son. And wow, it was just a it was just an absolute honor to be there. But I mean, also we had some great things this, this week. We had the, my favorite meet of the whole year in the state of, of, of New Jersey, the group championships at home Del park. And wow. Did, we'll get to that. Well, yeah, I know. But I mean, the, <laughs> the things that happened there, I mean, this has been an amazing week for me personally, for the sport, the marathon was ridiculous. It's just funny how like, you know, the whole world record in the marathon is such at times it's, it's such an arbitrary thing because it all depends on what course that day you run on, what yeah. the conditions were for that day. Like 204 in New York is like breaking two in other places. It, it's, it's just crazy how every course ha- has its own different dynamics, but I am ranting now, but what an amazing week I had. It was just absolutely astonishing. Dave. I love the rant and I love it because we haven't even like really started the show yet, which makes it even better. So today, this episode 63, Monday, November 7th is when we're recording 2023. If you like hearing Dave rant and you like what you hear on the show today, give a like, share, follow, subscribe, rate five stars, Spotify and iTunes, spread this word of mouth, go look for us on the socials at Talking and Oval. So before we jump into this week's episode, last week, we had one of my former athletes at Marist, uh, Santos Krishnan. He is now a coach and uh, we had a really great episode. Um, he's someone that ran through and you know still suffers to this day of cystic fibrosis but talked all about how he battled through it how he uses um you know running and everything and use track to kind of make it you know better so he was fantastic to talk to fantastic coach and you know we wish him the best and he'll be back on again soon because he has a lot to say and we'd love to have him back and we do at the jump we actually have some prs this week dave and i'm happy about it yes Uh, our good buddy chris tafalski over at westfield Group four state champs with a average of sixteen oh one, which I'm, I don't know, Dave. That like five man average, five man. So that to me, that's stupid. I'm not gonna lie, because that's like, second fastest average of the day behind one of our other former guests, Sean McCafferty at CBA, who averaged now, fifteen fifty one. You know, Dave, when you were running back when Roger Bannister was breaking four minutes and when not that old (laughs) and when we were but like 1601 was something you heard from like the national championship team. Like that was an average then. Like now I just want to give a shout out to the whole top five. So Avery Keith ran a 1540, set a school record. And again, this is over at Homedell Park. Uh, Ryan did the hardest course in the country by Sidious Mag. Yes, Ryan Daly, 1601, Jimmy Gildea, 1601, Eamon Mason, 1603, and Alex Valencia, 1620. So they were not messing around. Congrats to Westfield and uh, congrats to our buddy South Brunswick um, over there getting a wild card. Only the best comes on talking to Noble. So Emma Zawatsky running 18 flat. They yes. had her in 1759 at Homedale handheld, but it ran up to 18 flat. Group four state champ, former guest on our show. I mean, this 
Media Champs this weekend is going to be absolutely electric. It's going to be crazy. It certainly will. And one last little thing, notes-wise, before we get going, um, our good friend Adam Nalvin, his event, the River Rock and Roll Relay over in Bricktown, was a smashing success, raised $4,500 for the Monmouth and Ocean County Food Bank. So thank you to everyone that participated. Awesome job, Adam. Um, they'll be back again next year, and you know it will go back to charity again. So hopefully we get more people, and hopefully – we can have our two guests on tonight who are, you know, Jersey people to come back and maybe run at this event so we can get some star power there. But, you know, we have we've had repeat guests on before. We are pumped to have this repeat guest and his lovely second half coming on the show. We have Robbie and Josette Andrews, the world's fastest married milers. What's going on, guys? Oh, thank you so much for having us, guys. Well, thank you for having me back, and thank you for uh, getting Josette on here. She's uh, she's a lot more interesting than me, so I can't wait to hear what she has to say, but thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank you, guys. We're excited to talk to you. Absolutely. It's going to be our pleasure, and you know, hopefully, hopefully with this next segment, Josette doesn't like reveal things that she's never told Robbie and we don't start any strike. I don't, I don't want this to happen. I don't want, maybe we, Dave, maybe we should hold back here, but no, no I do, we don't hold back. <laughs> so uh, anyone that hasn't listened to Robbie's episode, go back and listen to it. It was fantastic. But anyone that does listen to the show knows that we love to start our segments asking our guests when they got the spark to become a runner, when that really, you know, when that moment happened that it was like, aha, you know, some people are like, I don't hate running. I'm really good at it. Other people just like kind of get that. So, Josette, when was the time that you can remember when you finally like flipped the switch and was like, you know what? I could do this for the rest of my life. Okay. Well, first, I just want to give um, I was also at the New York City Marathon and my teammate, Helen O'Beary, won the women's race. So um, that was pretty epic. So I think I need to start out with a shout out to that and on because they um, they flew us all out, our entire OAC team. And I actually, even being from New Jersey, I'd never watched the New York City Marathon live or any marathon live. So it was pretty special to watch one. And my um, teammate ended up winning. So that was pretty epic. Uh, yeah, that, so, that counts as epic, Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> on running is the place to be. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, on's on fire. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, getting back to your question about my spark for running, um, growing up, I always just loved being outside and playing sports. Like I was the person that would stay after school and stay long at recess and play kickball off the wall, four square. Like I was always just playing sports and something that was really cool at our elementary school actually was that my gym teacher, Mrs. Potts, she would do records on the wall. So you could get a record on the wall with like your picture and it was every single sport, whether it was um, track, basketball, sit-ups, jump rope, um, pretty much any sport you could think of, you could get a record for. So I wanted every record. So <laughs> I was there like doing backwards jump ropes and um, shooting basketball hoops, doing sit-ups, couldn't do any pull-ups. So I wasn't getting those records, but um, <laughs> you were able to get running records. So it, like when you were younger, it was like the 400 and then it moved up to the 800. And then by fifth grade, you would run a mile. Um, and I ended up at one point having like 14 records on the wall. <laughs> It was a record for the most records. It's a really small school. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I think I realized I was um pretty quick when my times were like as fast as the boys running times. Um, and they were a little scared to line up on race day. My elementary school was actually across the street from the track. So we would actually run it on a track, which was oh, pretty awesome. cool. Not just uh not just some dirt or grass, but yeah. um I I always loved playing sports and I ended up joining my church um, OLMC track team and was running on that team while also doing basketball, soccer, softball, everything you th can think of. And it just kind of kept evolving with the running. And um, I was very competitive and enjoyed racing and competing. And um, that's kind of when the spark for athletics really happened. That's awesome. So basically yes. just, just drive like that's all like it seems like you know just pure drive to be great and it's like and it's kind of like I want more records on that wall than anyone 
Yeah, a couple of records. And, you know, and that kind of really gels with the sport of track because you could do team sports. You could be great in team sports, but there's always the what ifs in team sports, right? Like people debate like Jordan and LeBron. Like, what if Jordan didn't have Pippen? It's like, okay, we don't care. But in like track, (laughs) it's like you did it. You did the time. And that no one could take that away from you. So I kind of gels with, you know, I'm competitive. I want every record. So hey, Josette is going out there for every single American yeah. distance record. So on so it right I, now. I dragged my friends out for the jump rope record. So we would do like <laughs> a jump rope in a jump rope with Double two dutch. other people. Yeah. Yep. Right. So it was any anything we could make up. So I was like, making stuff up. I was making sure. up jump rope records. So 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 here's the question. Uh have you gone back to your old school and if someone else has broken your record, do you get really pissed off? Like, 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 do you like, do you be like hey, I'm going to go back now because I went to that school at some point and I'm going to break that record again. <laughs> oh, um, actually, so she, um, our teachers had retired, but when she did retire, they had me come out when I was in high school and do a talk to the elementary school and they handed me all my records. So I, <laughs> I have the copies there at my mom's house, actually in New Jersey, but um it was really cool because they brought me back to speak to the elementary school and it was her um, retirement party also. So that was really special. But yeah, so there's no more to be broken. Now I got to focus on the track records, professional records. Yeah, We, we, <laughs> moved, up, we moved up in the league. You, you should see the record wall in our house. Yeah. It's like most laps. It's uh, who sleeps in the latest. I got that one. Uh, Josette has uh, most trips to the refrigerator. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a little more complicated now. Yeah, hey. <laughs> That's awesome. I could, you know, you guys need to actually start that. If you don't have that, I'll be upset if you actually <laughs> don't have a record wall. I'd feel lied to right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so going with that spark, I want you, Josette, to take me up memory lane. Um, I want you to go back to your time starting as a runner, then, you know, getting into it really and like whether you really started like middle school team, high school team, college, and now pros. What are some of your favorite memories of being a runner starting from when you're younger and then all the way up to now? And, you know, your story is very yet to be written. So give us some, uh, some of your favorite memories in running. Yeah. So, um, it really, the running with like the competitions really started with my OMC church team and like getting into the middle school running. And it was just really fun to come to practice. And honestly, it was hanging out with my friends at first. I mean, sometimes we even, at one point, the coach, I remember had a conversation with my mom because I was hanging out with the boys too much and we weren't actually doing our runs. <laughs> we were just playing games and um, it definitely was not serious in the beginning at all. And I had my friends that played soccer and basketball and all of that. So I was running around doing everything, but I always looked forward to um, like doing the town 5K, like the 10 of 5K every year. Like that was a big circle the race and we're going to do the town 5k and compete at that. And those are always some really fond memories. And um, one thing that was really sweet, actually my one friend, Veronica, when I signed to go run in college, she found a video of me like getting an interview after the 10 of 5, 5k talking to someone. And I was like, yeah, one day I hope I can run in college and maybe get a scholarship and then maybe I'll run professionally. <laughs> and I said that as like, I don't even know what grade I was in. I think it was in middle school, but that was really cute that she brought that out for my um, signing announcement video. And that was really special to look back at. Cause that's definitely where like it all started in my town in Tenafly, um as a young girl and um, just doing it because I loved being active and being outside. <laughs> that mean, that's awesome. So you, had a lot of success throughout your career, um, high school, college, and everything. So what are some of your favorite memories? Because I like hearing these because Dave often talks about, and we always find that people at like yours and Robbie's level, where you guys are elite level runners, you guys tend to remember like that great relay or that great... and like. Me and Dave, I'm looking at it going, if I like won a national championship or anything, I'd be like, I hate my team. I won a national championship. Like, but it's like the elite level athletes are like very much like. So what are some of your favorite memories of competing in high school, competing in college, both, you know, at North Carolina and Georgetown? I was coaching at Manchester when uh, you were in high school. And it, I, I remember just watching and like the coaches from, from other teams would be like, wow, that's Look at that, like 440s every time. Like, it, it, like you were just a special person to actually watch race every time. Like, I remember at, at times, like, oh, 
I think we have one of our athletes in this race, but you know, like it's it's just hard to like keep your, <laughs> your eye off of, 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 of like someone running that fast. So like, like kind of like Alex said, like when did you know that like and like what is it like being the hunted for every single race in the high school level? Like what is that like and like always have to be on your game or was it like I don't have to be on, I'm still going to win or, or did you always have that mentality and and those great memories? So like. How did? Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite stories, of course, in high school was wait, winning the state meet at champions in the um, 441 um, in the 1600. Like that race is my favorite high school memory race. Um, it's just pretty crazy that that was also the year that I had transitioned and done indoor track for the first time. Like I was playing basketball before in the winter and I remember that was going into my junior year, like my goal. I remember I ran 509 as a freshman, 507 as a sophomore. And I was like pissed because I was like, why didn't I improve more from freshman to sophomore year? And I remember my you played like, basketball. You went and played basketball. You didn't touch your running shoes. And um, it's like, well, you just didn't, you weren't running. And I was like, oh yeah, that's true. And it was a really... <laughs> hard decision then junior year after a breakout um cross country season because I did my summer miles I, I put in that work and had a great um junior cross country season and that was a really hard decision to be like I'm going to stop playing basketball and go to um indoor track and do that and be running full-time because all my best friends were on the basketball team I was starting on the basketball team like it was a really big deal and it made seriously all the difference because I remember my high school was like Let's break five in the mile. And then the first indoor relay that we did at the armory, which was really cool. My first um, indoor race was at the armory ever. Um, I ended up running a five minute mile, just anchoring the DMR that we did. And I was like, oh, wow, that was my, <laughs> that was my goal for the year. <laughs> I just did the first meet of the season and it just kept going and going it then went to a 448 445 and then ended with the 441 that outdoor season into the state meet of champs and that was just incredible for me and then going to national outdoor nationals for the first time and finishing second and just like running bravely i just always would take out the race and just run my splits i, I think i even split that 441 i was like 70 70 70 70 point um <laughs> whatever but it's um every race I kind of just like went for it and did my thing. Um and yeah, it's just it was amazing about the like progression and how it kind of happened and it made that sacrifice of stopping basketball worth it. Cause I mean it was like a really hard decision for me. Like there was a lot of tears around that decision. And um after that junior year, I was like, oh, okay, this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I want to be doing. And that's what ultimately allowed me to be able to run in college. So um, that was really special that entire junior year season. So it uh, sounds like it was a harder choice for you to quit basketball than it was for Robbie too, because you were like starting on the actual varsity team. <laughs> <laughs> a starting point guard sophomore year. Rob, Robbie was, was on. He's, he's like, I love basketball. He's like, you know, I, I was kind of playing here and there. Come on, man. I was only five foot five. Like, no <laughs> Listen, I, I get it, Robbie. I'm just like you. Like, I, I get it. But my ceiling, I was really, well, I was really far from the ceiling, but I, I, I had no <laughs> Was it probably- Let's just say I got called into the athletic department and we had all the coaches there, me, my mom. And it was a big decision about like, are you really stopping basketball all right. right now? Well, so I listen. think you made the uh, proper choice. I, I've never seen Josette play basketball. We played one-on-one and all I right. rolled my ankle okay. and I was like, we're never going right. to do this again. Sorry. I destroyed Josette in one-on-one. Of course. <laughs> Oh, so now it's horse. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it was a competitive game of basketball. It doesn't matter what it was. <laughs> okay, so I'm destroying Josette in a competitive game of any type of basketball, and magically her ankle rolls. And uh, let's just say I could have seen her. I could see her playing at, at college basketball. So it was. It was um because I knew I was going to play in college. So if I could have played in college, Josette. <laughs> it was I, much- yeah, no, listen, Robbie- I don't think. I- Playing college as much as I love basketball. Robbie was <laughs> was going to be an all star rec basketball player at at a D three college if if, if you wanted to be. No. 
<laughs> you know, it's funny. It's like every coach's fear for every other sport is if their athlete goes and runs track and all of a sudden realizes they're great at it. Because I feel like that's like that happens so many times. Like you'll have like the football player and it's like, oh, they go and throw a shot. Oh, they just threw 40 feet. Oh shit. I just lost my football player because you know, like now they're like dedicating and they're doing so many other things. Like, so it's like, yeah, I feel like you're a basketball coach, but in high school, a good coach will say, Hey, go do what you got to do. Like if this is your passion, I'm not going to stop you. And it's funny because Dave knows this. I kind of went like a weird route similar to yours, but I like started off playing football my freshman year. Had a real good freshman season, uh, you know, ran 430 mile, 10 flat, two miles, good. Never really got much better. I kind of sucked the rest of my life, but <laughs> convinced, joined the sucking club. Back was convinced day. to run XC, <laughs> ran XC sophomore and junior year, got hurt both of those years. You know, junior year was pretty good. And then after junior year, I found out I needed ankle surgery after my senior year because it was like terrible. I had like a fracture for like five years. And I didn't know. And so at that point, I was just like, I'm going to go play football again because I don't want to do cross country and get hurt again. I played football again, senior year, started varsity and everything, and then finished up running, ran at Maris. But it was like, it was kind of the opposite where I was like, I don't know how good I'm going to be at running anymore. I'm going to go do my passion again, where you were like, I'm about to be great at running. And obviously you made a much better choice than me because I'm hosting a podcast about running and you guys are still running. (laughs) So that's awesome. So now I want to jump in college. So you have a great high school. You go to North Carolina and also Georgetown. So talk about um, your time in college. Yeah. So I did um, two years at um, UNC and I ended up transferring to Georgetown and did three years there. And um, college was definitely a big transition, like going from high school to college. And at first I definitely struggled a little bit to like find my groove and in the sport and um ultimately decided that i thought i my heart was just saying that i think i needed to change like by my sophomore year at unc i was like i just feel like i'm not going to be able to reach my full potential here with my running and that was really like that is your life when you are a college athlete your sport is your life um as as much as i loved unc as a school it was an absolutely incredible school and I remember it was always my dream to go there, actually. Um, for basketball. <clears throat> no, no. <laughs> but I mean, I wouldn't blame you. Basketball over there has got to be amazing going over there and watching those games. <laughs> a cool story. Um, my one friend in high school, she had a softball tournament in Myrtle Beach, and I ended up going with her for the summer um, to just go for the week and watch her play softball and go to the beach and stuff. And her mom on the way um, stopped at Chapel Hill to show us the school. Um, this was sophomore year, and I was like, man, like, this is really where I want to go. I bought all the shirts with my last name. Like, we saw everything. And I was like, this would be a dream. And it was really special then after junior year when um, going into senior year, that, like, became a reality, which is just so crazy. And I remember, like, talking about that. I was like, remember when you said you, like, wished you could go here? And we're like, yeah, that will never happen. And then a year later, you are getting recruited to go there. So um, that was, like, a really full circle moment. But um, And I did look at Georgetown as well. Um, in high school and UVA where Robbie went, but, um, I was, I was looking up and down the coast, but, um, transferring to Georgetown, um, also me was the best decision for me. And again, it was also a a rocky transfer. Actually, when I got there, um, the coach who was going to be their coach, Mike ended up leaving and going to NAU. So we were left without a coach. Um, and Julie Cully actually ended up being the coach that took over Jersey. Former guest. Uh, Former guest guest. earlier, yeah, on our show, yeah. She speaks Um, very, very highly of both of uh, uh, yes, you guys, uh, yes. I was upset. Also at the marathon, Chris was going for his um twenty fifth. I know he he ran three hundred four. I know it was was his first time that he didn't break in in, in like twenty something years. Her her husband, I was like, ah, but but he was super humble. He had a great post about. He's like, it 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 had to end at at some point. So. I was trying That's to awesome. see them. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to cross paths with them. Didn't get that finish line ticket to get in the <laughs> <laughs> luxury uh, finish line uh, section. But um, <laughs> but she ended up being the coach that took over. And that was really special for me, having like a female coach who also was an Olympian in the 5K. And like she had done everything. From New Jersey. Yeah, from New Jersey. I was like, man, like this is like, 
can I think of a better mentor to have as a coach right now? No, but um, it took a few, um, oh, honestly, a few seasons to like really get going. And I had a few like fluke injuries, honestly, um, pretty bad ones actually, but um, random things that happened, but it was really my fifth year um, of college that I really was able to have that like foundational like consistency and have that breakthrough that I always thought I could do. And that was, I kept running that entire summer to be able to like run professionally after that. So that was um really, it was a really hard like college journey. And it took me a while to really find my groove, especially coming from high school when you're heavily recruited as one of the top high school milers and then like really struggling and like no one knew who I was in college. And I made my first NCA track season as a fifth year, like that. I thought I was, it just wasn't the path that I thought was going to happen, but I never stopped believing in my abilities. I just needed the chance to really get to show it. And honestly, I wasn't able to do that till my fifth year. So it's just a very unique journey that I've had um, in the sport from all the waves yeah. in my journey. But um, I'm glad that I was able to have that breakout fifth year to let me pursue running professionally right now. Yeah. You, it's funny. Cause uh, the, the, the first time that I met Julie Colley was, I was at Rutgers as, as uh, well. And we were at like a track party and like, I had like a, a beer with her and it was like, it was, <laughs> and then to like, to see her journey kind of reminds me, of like you, you know, like like she got hurt a lot in college, and then she didn't have anywhere to go after college. So she actually went into coaching college, and then she she couldn't find a coach, and she went with Centro, and then she went with uh, Gagliano, and and then she ended up winning the U.S. Trials. So like I I definitely see some similarities in your story, like to 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 keep going and to have that perseverance and to, to keep fighting, knowing that like I have so much more left, and to have that self belief is awesome so hopefully she kind of instilled some of that with with her story in to you when uh, you were with her definitely because even like as a fifth year like I it was really hard for me to like vocalize what I wanted to do anymore because I felt like I was like so far away from the goals that I wanted to do and like even to be able to like say what I wanted to do. So she and coach Baker, who was my other coach and even just my teammates, like having them there to talk about it was so important to vocalize that. And Robbie, when we started dating, like him being there and like supporting me on my journey of running, like that was huge. And that was what I needed to really like get focused and have those people around me who really believed in me and also were vocalizing even my goals, even if I wasn't saying it, like they knew deep down what I wanted to do and what I was trying to achieve. So they all, all of them have played a role in being able to get me to then that next level. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's also cool. It was like Robbie was a teammate of Julie at the NJ. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> running club. It's just, you, it's, a, it's just this cool, unique circle. And one of the things too, like that, like comes from like what you're saying and what Julia said in the past is like the greats, while the great runners don't quit, they also have great support systems, right? Because it's hard to do these things on your own, you know, like, especially with running. You go through, you know, as long as you two have been running and things like that, injuries happen. So it's like, and if you're on your own and you're trying to work out on your own, it's really discouraging to rehab and go back at it and try to get yourself to another level. And it's, and just the fact that you have a great support system, like that's one of the things that we love doing on this show is kind of revealing the human side because, you know, they see you running at the, you know, United States championship races. And it's like, oh, Josette Andrews, this is her PRs. This is this. And that's all they know. They don't know what you've been through. And it was like a young girl might watch you and be like, oh, she's inspiring. I bet she's always been good. And then they listen to this. And it's like, I wasn't great until my fifth year. As a, you know, I was a really good high school runner. And fifth year college is when I truly figured it out. And so it's like just to be able to bring that element is like something I think that's great for people to hear that. You don't have to do it all on your own. Have a great support system around you. Find people that are willing to sit there. And when you're ready to give up on your dreams, like, oh, hell no, you're going to go do it. Like kind of force you in, in a, in a nice way, I guess, bully you to keep going in like the nicest way possible. <laughs> Definitely gave me some tough love. At times, very tough. Huh? <laughs> she and she'll admit it too. But um, it was all it was all out of 
love from everybody and wanting and seeing what I was capable of and like wanting to bring that out and help me bring that out. Yeah. So, something I would say is that, uh, you know, a, f- a fifth year in school is not always a given, like, you know, Josette had an unfortunate fourth year or her, you know, her senior year. And it, it was like, kind of like, well, should I, should I do it? And coach Julie and coach Baker were both like, abs- like you have to, like you have to come back. There's something in there. And we, we see, we see something in you, like just watching you run there. Like, like you said, Dave, some, just watching Joe is that run. It's like, it's just mesmerizing. And like, you can just see it in her. And so I, I, I give a lot of credit to coach Julie and coach Baker for, for pushing her into that fifth year and believing in her to, to train for that, that year. Cause she didn't have a cross country season in her fifth year. So she was kind of, kind of on her own, which is ultimately what she needed. And then, mm-hmm. She came on great indoor and she came on great outdoor and she just, she hit her, a fun fact, she hit her peak mileage the week before the NCAA championship, outdoor championship that season. That's how slowly I, Coach I Baker so and Coach Julie not. were bringing her along. Wow. And they were just super cautious with her, yeah. but they figured out the formula. It's like, mm-hmm. you've got this amazing talent and you got this girl that's, she, she'll run for any record you put out there. So just <laughs> keep her on the track and, and that was the formula. And then, Coach Fox followed the same formula and Coach Dathan's following the same formula. And, you know, we, we've got it. I'm sitting next to a superstar. So <laughs> but it, I mean, it, yeah. how many of those coaches brought out the jump rope to uh, bring you back, you know, to, to your <laughs> days from Co- oh, Coach this. Baker, actually, yeah, when Coach I was Baker. like coming back from my injury, um, he'd have me warm up with the jump rope just to get like the fast switch muscles working again because he was like, "We gotta, we gotta get you going." You're like, Coach, this. I know all about this jump rope. I did it in elementary school. I am ready to go. I have the record on the wall. At Grab two teammates and was like, "Make this quicker! Make this quicker!" It's just like, "Go quicker! I could do this more. I'm better." Like jump in the rope, and I'm like, "Oh God, this is terrible." <laughs> trying to so, show off, so, yeah. yeah, trying to show off, but not having it. But and. What was really cool about my fifth year was actually that that was the year that the U.S. champs was pretty late because um the yep. Doha World Championships wasn't until September. Yeah. So I kept running that entire summer and was able to keep competing get better, yeah. and get better. And like I ran PRs that summer late and made my first U.S. championship and Julie came out with me and so did Robbie. And um that was really special too to be at my first um, U.S. championships and run it like one more time in my Georgetown uniform and um, and then ultimately sign um, with an agent and then um, sign with Reebok as um, my first contract. So, so yeah, go into that. So go ahead, Robbie. Uh, th- yeah, I'll just. I there's no timeline. It's mm-hmm. everyone. Excuse me. Everyone's timeline is so different, and you're you're absolutely right. The you, I would say find your support system first because if you have the proper support system you're going to run your best so it it's kind of worth investing in that support system over a situation where you don't think you where you, you might think you're getting a, a better situation but it's really not and that's kind of what what ended up working for josette because he's but yeah just kind of bet on yourself a little bit and like kind of invest in yourself and and um I'd say that that it doesn't matter if it happens your freshman year or your, or your fifth year of college or even t- five years after college. You know, it's, it just there's no timeline. But I- so you know, now you're done with college. The decision to go pro, you decide to sign with Reebok. You're committing to go pro, and as we sit now, you're one of the best 1500 meter runners in the country. Um, 5K I, too. To be the best and 5K as well. Um, one of the best in the country, and I think eventually going up, be right up there, one of the best in the world in both of those events. So, um, what was that like? What was it like jumping from college to pro? Because I'm always interested to hear different perspectives because uh, everyone's like, this isn't the easiest jump going from having a team. And now it's like, you're a pro and your teammates are your competitors. That's like, so what, a, so what was that jump like? And, you know, you went to Reebok and now you're over at on what, what's, what's been uh, all that like so far? Yeah. The, the craziest thing about um, the year that I signed pro is that it was ended, ended up being um, COVID year. So my first year as a pro felt um, really bizarre because it didn't even feel like Absolutely. we were training. Like I didn't feel like I had any pressure whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and maybe that was like almost like too relaxed because then when races started opening up and we're like, oh, let's go like jump into it. 
um, me and my teammates would agree, like we were all very unprepared for that. Um, but and, and like that, that wasn't that was because they were so unsure of yeah, what was going on that it was such a weird year. It was it was kind of like well, like take a breather. You have another. You have a, you have fifteen months until the Olympic trials. Now, like, mm-hmm. let's take our breather. And then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, you have three weeks until you race. Yeah. So it was. It was kind of a, a a result of the circumstance. It wasn't like training was going poorly. It just mm-hmm. it wasn't. They weren't totally firing on all. Cylinders. Nobody know what they were allowed to do, right? Like, kind of, it was like, yeah. are we allowed to train in a group? Are we going to get arrested if we run as a pack in Central <laughs> Park? Like, what is like? We didn't know. Nobody knew. It's like, do we have to train with masks on? Are we going to breathe our own carbon like throughout a five k? Like, what? So I don't. I you know I get it. That's such a weird circumstance, and I could imagine like you guys felt unprepared, but probably everyone kind of walked in there. It was like, all right, let's go run our college PRs. Let's see what we can do now. Like. Yeah. <laughs> And I guess like I spent that whole year just trying to adjust to coach Fox's training also, um, especially just feeling like I was um, pretty like underdeveloped in terms of like consistency. So what I really needed was like some another consistent year under my belt while also adjusting to the pro lifestyle and um, the higher level of training and being with um, professional athletes, like working out with them. So, um, everything was just elevated. And, um, I, but I really enjoyed like the lifestyle of being a professional runner. Um, and I also had Robbie, so we were doing the same thing. So that definitely made it easier on me, maybe compared to other people, but, um, it was then having that 2020 and taking that into 2021 where really we like saw it click with coach Fox and his training. And like, I remember the first workout back that fall, like I was able to finally do one of his like Ridge road, which is a very hilly temple road in, um, in in Charlottesville, Virginia. And I like, I crushed it the first workout out and kind of just from there just kept building and building and building and it ended up being a huge breakout season 2021 where um had a huge breakout in the 5k ran sub four in the 1500 traveled to europe for the first time (laughs) did the whole diamond league tour and um ended up getting third in the diamond league final that year and that was just one of the most like memorable seasons so far i've ever had honestly um and i know it was only two years ago. Right. Yeah. (laughs) But, um, that was honestly incredible. And, um, that was really special with coach Fox, like really building me up as an athlete and like seeing that potential and helping me develop to a whole new runner as a professional. And now I feel like I'm, I've been with on for almost a year, um, (laughs) now. And just, I felt like I was ready for that next step and like on and the OAC was that next, next step in that next move for me to keep improving and keep elevating in this sport. Was that a so, tough decision? Yeah. To, uh, uh, leave Reebok and then go over to on. And, you know, how much was it both of you sitting around the dinner table going, do I do it? Do I not? So like, what, what was that? What was that thought process like? Yeah. So I was with Reebok for um, three years. And then when the, my first contract was ending with them, I um, was looking around at other groups and like seeing what the situation was. And uh, um, with Reebok, it was a little bit of a unique situation because they had gotten sold um, by Adidas to another brand. So we didn't really know the direction that Reebok also wanted to go with the company and the group as a whole. And it just made the most sense for me to go with a more of a sure thing with um, the OAC and a new group. And he, the hardest part was like leaving Fox and like the foundation that we had started. Cause coach Fox, like the more you're in the system, like the better you're going to get. And I don't, I didn't even feel like three years was like enough in his system, if that makes sense. Like, um, so that was really hard, like leaving coach Fox, um, especially with how much he helped me grow as an athlete in that short period of time. But for my long-term development, it made the most sense. And um, it wasn't like a scary decision for me to go and make this move and be training at altitude and um, having Alicia Munson as my training partner. <laughs> and it's just like Not all bad. of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not bad at all. all it all made um, sense and like the support that On was giving to the group and what they were doing with developing the shoes and the spikes. And that's when the whole 
the super shoes super were starting shoes. to come out. Yeah. So, um, and Reebok had decided not to go that direction with the super shoes. So seeing what like the, it just made, it made a lot of sense. And on was checking a lot of boxes. So, well, yeah, um, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, on focuses on the sport that you love, like that is yeah. their main focus. That is main goal. like, you know, Reebok, even Nike, you know, to, to an extent, like they, they have their, they have so many different branches of, of what they do, like on Hoka, like those are companies that really focus on track and field and want to make everything better for the athletes that they sponsor and that they support. And plus you, you know, you like, you have someone like coach Nathan Ritzenheim who like went, went through all this stuff himself. So he understands the uh, struggle as an athlete and he's, been through it so like i mean it just has to be amazing and and what he's doing there and what that brand is doing is absolutely amazing so what is it like every day going to practice with alicia monsoon or or urid nagoose running a 343 in the mile like like what is that like to, to be working out with those people every single day i mean did that- you just go up to him and like poke him when you last saw him like are you real like after like, he did that like i would just like go touch him and be like are you a human like what is going on here 414 high school miler now he's running 343 going head to head with Jakob finger britson and it's like you know like hey and hey finger britson said follow me and, and you're on fast and i said <laughs> we did and i thought he had him there so you know like, like, with, with 100 to go but like so what's it like like being with those type of athletes Every single day, knowing that everyone that you are training with is improving and getting better and faster. That has to be such a relief. You know, like it has to give you a sense of I made the absolute right choice in what I'm doing. And on top of that, real quick, you're one of them. So it's not like you're just training with them. Like you are there. So it's not like, uh, you know, I know sometimes we have this out of body experience. Like, what am I doing here? Right. But it's like you absolutely belong there. So don't like, you know, what is it like being there? (laughs) <laughs> like, oh, thank you guys. Yeah. I mean, it's really special going to practice and being surrounded by the group of athletes that I'm surrounded by. Um, everyone, the energy is like incredible at practice and Dathan has such good energy and we just hired an assistant coach, um, Kelsey Quinn and her energy is just electric at practice. And it's a really fun, welcoming group. And, um, we meet six days a week, um, wow. and we're together so much. Yeah. It's a lot different um than even like with Reebok and just how much time we spend together so um I'm with them every single day and we all know what we are doing and we're all supporting each other and um we show up the guys and the girls and it's like a really incredible environment and it's really special to be a part of and um it's exciting uh, yes it, it doesn't look real when they're running <laughs> like, if, if you're watching, you need you need to ask what what pace they're running because it looks everything looks like the warm up. It's it's un but it's so hard to explain to someone. Like watching Ali, Yarid, Mario, Mario like- George, <laughs> Joe, Morgan, Yonit, watching them run 440 pace, you would literally think they're jogging. And then it's the same with the girls. Like watching Alicia and Josette run five minute pace. I'm like, there's, there's no way they're doing, they're doing this. And then they, it's like 75. And I'm like, you're, what are we watching? It's, <laughs> truly, you're truly watching greatness. It's, well, you know what, it's, what, what, what I love is, you know, like that's such a big change here in, in the estates. You know, we, 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 we've had some older runners on who like, they didn't have, like, they would have a, a, a coach and they, they, but, but they would live home and they would follow their workouts. Like, it's it's a destination like you are expected to be there to move there to train and like that is your job and i think that's what and we are really seeing it now in the transition in the distance running here in the u.s because like we are definitely competing at a much higher level because we have the means and and the, the tools now to finally do what other countries are doing focus on your craft you don't have to have a job you can this can be what you do like you said you meet six days a week like that wasn't the, the, the case in the, in the 90s or the early two, 2000s. I think it's absolutely wonderful that, you know, that there's these other shoe companies that have formed that are making this happen and that we are actually showing what America can do in terms of distance running. I think it's absolutely wonderful. And Robbie, quickly talk about your experience, because obviously you were pro. 
before Josette was, you know, you still a pro. Obviously, I, I think you're going to have a fantastic comeback. I'm still waiting on that. But it's coming. It's happening. But so talk about your experience turning pro and having a training group as opposed to what you're seeing over at on. Yeah. So so we <laughs> Josette and I, our stories are so opposite. It's, it's crazy. From college to professionally, we've had totally different experiences where Josette has been part of two amazing groups with absolutely yeah, it's incredible support. Yeah. It, the, her teammates, her coaches, the, their the company, the, like the, pouring yeah. money into it. She had, she's been part of two amazing groups and I wasn't part of a shoe based group, but coach Vidge and I kind of formed our own group. Uh, and of course I was with NJ and Y for the, for the one year <laughs> and NJ and Y that was before the Hoka, uh, Hoka was sponsoring them. And, it was it was much more blue collar back then. Uh, I'm sure Julie's told you all about it. And, <laughs> and she tonight, made a, 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 a point to say it was New Jersey first. And J and Y and J and Y. It was her. That's right. And she her made like the- and uh, Aaron Donahue were like, no, no, no. We are from Aaron Jersey. Donahue. It is Jersey first. I feel mm-hmm. yep. And, and I think they designed like the first shirts. Like yeah. it was Julie and her yeah. design. Yeah, yeah, that, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. So, uh, it's it's N J N Y. That's right. Um, <laughs> And so, so I, I kind of hung around a, the, a college way longer. You know, I was helping. I was a volunteer at Princeton for seven years, yeah. and uh, I kind of had. I brought a couple of my teammates from Virginia. Then uh, a couple of Princeton grads stayed, and we we recruited. I don't know how we recruited this kid, but he's from Davidson, and uh, he he was like a one fifty two guy. And Vidge just told him, "Yeah, just come up to New Jersey. You can live with the guys." We had no idea. He showed up to our doorstep and he said, "Hey, I'm Patrick," and we're like, "Okay, <laughs> like, what are you? Who are you?" <laughs> He's like, "Oh, Vid said I could stay with you guys." <laughs> we were like, "Great, man, get on the couch." <laughs> and uh, he ended up, he ended up being one of my best friends or one of our best friends. And uh, he he got down to one forty seven two, you know, like and but we were just training. We were just dudes being dudes uh, out down in Princeton and. Uh, you know, Vidge was obviously coaching in college at that point, and yeah. uh, so my dad was helping us a lot with with um, workouts whenever uh, Vidge was traveling for, for Princeton. And you ran with the Princeton guys sometimes. And, I, and I, we did help with the, I did help with the Princeton guys a lot. You know, that was I did enjoy coaching them as well as training with them. Uh, but it, it's just it's just different than when you're showing up to practice and, and Dathan is telling you like, okay, we're doing this today so that we can get ready for this next week and blah. And like he just it was. It definitely wasn't a professional environment, but that doesn't mean it wasn't right for me. Look at Sam Freakle, you know, uh, yeah. you know, he, he's in a, a really similar situation and he's, he's running, he's been, I think he's PR'd every year since he's, since he's yeah. graduated. It's so it's, it's not to say that it's impossible to run well like that. It's just different. Mm-hmm. And, and, and good runners can make multiple situations. Yeah, work. exactly. Like, if exactly. you put people in different scenarios, but it's just, now it's um companies really want that group structure so yeah. it's really from like the companies trying to form that and other athletes now are like yeah. wanting to be part of that because it's you feel like you're part of something special and like i will say it's probably easier to yes. to reach your potential when yeah i mean like we're, we're you know we're, we're we're seeing it and now you know like like bowerman track club was this, this big huge thing and now like there's a lot of people who are leaving because like they want a coach who is coaching them as pros it's it's hard and it's nothing against schumacher at, at, at all he's a phenomenal coach but you know pro runners need someone who's going to focus on them it's it's like name me any other sport where you are sharing time with and with uh, someone who coaches in college who's also coaching pros doesn't happen and it, it's it's not that these aren't phenomenal coaches just that like these athletes to compete at the level that they want to compete at. You need someone who's there with you, ride or die every day, who's going to do what's best for you. And I love that that has been a huge change. And there's so many groups now and programs now, no matter what it is, who are the only, I, I think it's beautiful. You know, and I think that that's got to be like the model in the start, right? Cause we've talked a lot of times here. We want to start seeing a thing where we have teams and we have, you know, Josette, we can have a, a league in the United States where it's like, hey, let's contract you for six races. Let's, you know, you compete at these six races for us and we'll give you whatever, 60K this year, whatever, something, a guaranteed amount. 
to like come and compete, which is something that I think we need. We need a promotion, but I think that's a, the first step, right? We have legitimate teams and these teams are dedicated. They have a coach. There's someone there that they can go to and say, Hey, we want to sign the on team for six races. We, the on team needs to be here outside of injury, but you know, so we don't have all these, well, the training wasn't right. So we're dropping out of this race. Cause we're not a hundred percent. It's like, no, you're contracted to be here type of. So I think that's the a, a big logical step and a team like on who's having a ton of success in showing that this model works. And, you know, and Robbie, you were saying there's different things for different athletes. Sam is doing that, but I feel like, if on keeps doing what they're doing, a Sam Prequel is going to be an exception to the rule, right? Because it's the team aspect. People thrive there. Like Josette said, going and training with some of the best athletes on the planet every single day with direction, not just going and do it and going, we ran in college. Let's go make our own workouts. Like, no, you have a coach there that's knowledgeable and is like, no, this is what you're doing. I don't care if you don't want to do it. This is the workout I designed. Go do it. And I feel like that, like, that's got to be the model. And I love what you guys are doing there. I love what Dathan's doing there at on. And it's showing that we need this in this sport. Right. And, and, that, like, and things like that. Like we were all on teams in high school yes. and in college. And like, that is an atmosphere where, where I feel almost all of us really like, cause then like, you're not only running for yourself, you're running for a purpose. You, 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 like you're, you're running for your teammates. Like it's, it's so hard when you're doing the, the daily grind by yourself every day. Now you're like, Oh, well, like, I want to do this because I train with this person and like it, it just has it really motivates the individual more when they have a team be behind them. I, I mean, that's just my my thoughts. I could be completely off base, you know, like maybe a, as a pro, you're like, no, I don't care about anything else. I'm, I'm worried myself. But like just having that whole aspect of a, a team is just a beautiful, wonderful thing. But yeah, Josette, speak to that. Does this feel more like that college atmosphere again, where you're training with teammates and obviously it's pro, it's a next step, but like you have people that have your back and it's not just so killer, like as pros typically are. Yeah. It, it's so funny. It definitely does not feel anything like college in okay. that sense, <laughs> how much more like professional it is. It's just yeah. so hard to even like compare the two but, but, I, I, but it's, it's similar to college where like there's a little there, up there's like your... there's like the little groups it's like you yep. get he's got it he's got his distance guys his his less distance guys his distance girls and his less distance girls. and we're like meeting for to go out for a run and we're talking and chatting and like the runs are going by yeah. you do an eight mile run and it goes by so fast because you're talking to your friends like you would in college so it's really it's really special and very like unique situation like having a group like this at on where you have so many like high level athletes training together and we're on a team but while also pursuing our individual goals Mm -hmm. and what's great is that like everyone of course is has their individual training but we mesh so much and like can train together and do so much together which is so special and like being part of on I've learned so much, like even in this past year, I wasn't lifting the last three years with Reebok and now like lifting and just like learning so much, even from our PTs and um, my like new coaches, even my teammates. Like, I just feel like I'm way more even like knowledgeable Mm. and that's what I wanted. Like I wanted to keep growing and I feel like I'm doing that here with on. And that's because of the structure that I'm around and like the team that I'm around. So Josette, admit it real quick right here. When you have a teammate that's in the same event at you at the same meet, you're kind of just like a little added, like, I'm going to beat you so I can brag later at practice. Is that, is that kind of, that, that's that got to be there. Like, I, I don't care if I win this meet or not. I'm going to make sure I beat you so I practice and go, so you remember last week? You could be oh the workout. Ah. <laughs> boys are more like that um, uh, compared yeah. to the girls. I will admit the boys get very competitive. Yeah. Um, and it's it. pretty pretty funny to watch. A lot of testosterone. So, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, that's like that with the with the girls. But every race you're doing, you want to win. So yeah. um, you're warming up together. You're doing everything together. But like once the gun goes off, like you you could be like working together in the race. But like at the end of the race, like you. And Dathan is going to tell you the best plan for you to be successful in the race. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a unique situation for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's so, awesome. So let's what transition. Going on to is that it's, um, we have so many like countries here. Like right. we were represented from the U.S., Australia, New Zealand, um, Spain, Italy, uh, Switzerland, 
um, um, Helen, um, oh, Kenya, Kenya. Kenya. Yeah. like, it's just crazy. Like <laughs> we are a very international team, which is also like really special. And, um, I think it also helps the dynamic of the team as yeah, well. For sure. So let's, uh, transition here. How does the fastest mile couple in the history of running, how do they meet? Like, like what's the, the, the story behind the beginning of the Robbie and Joseph Andrews story? So we met at Georgetown <laughs> the um, first year I transferred there. So that was going into um, 2016, mm-hmm. right? Yep. The fall of 2016 is when I transferred there and um, it was really cool. Um, the fifth years on our team had like put together of like maybe every month someone would come and like talk to the team. And at first it was like some of the teammates and then they would bring some people. And um, one of the guests was going to be Robbie Andrews coming and um you can talk about how sarah said it up, yeah my, uh, one of my best friends from college his sister was on the georgetown team and she asked me if i'd come talk to the team and like I, I would i would have done anything for her so yeah i was like of course i'll go and talk to the team and uh so i'm, I'm talking to the team and i'm kind of only looking at one person <laughs> and i'm just i'm like i'm just like laser beaming at josette this whole time i don't even realize it and afterwards uh I'm, i was so happy she like stuck around a little bit she was like yeah. asking she was like talking about new well, jersey and stuff and like it, it was great and uh then uh some of her guy teammates uh who actually uh amos bertelsmeyer who got who got we went to their wedding a couple weeks ago uh we went out to the bar and i was like i was like dude you gotta get your josette out here and <laughs> they texted me he, he he's like well one she's 20 and two she has a workout tomorrow and i was like oh my god she's only 20 and <laughs> so i'm like all right you know whatever whatever and then uh, a, f- a few months go by and then you're back at georgetown i'm back at georgetown because we're going to meet mr uh barack obama uh with the with the u.s team and what was really cool is that georgetown actually put on a team usa event on campus like mm-hmm. they rented out the entire yeah. building and had a ceremony for Team USA athletes. Yeah. So everyone was there at Georgetown, and, uh, which was really cool because we were all freaking out. And Karate was very happy to go back there. Yeah. Oh, I, I was pumped. I was pumped. And um, and so we, we uh, so we get we get to into the party somehow, and <laughs> and um. And we're having we do not time. support illegal, illicit activities in college campuses <laughs> and this show. Yes, we do. <laughs> she wasn't part of Team USA, but she got into the party. She Listen. got a ticket to the she, event. She got a ticket to the event. So it's all fair game. Go we for it. That event and everyone on the Georgetown team was like trying to get raffle tickets to try to get into the party. Um, and... I ended up getting in, and then Joe White. And Joe White like, got Clayton in too. Brought in I Joe think in. Robbie might have had some influence there about getting Joe a in. VIP like pointed a shot. He's like that girl. She comes to the front <laughs> line. In. Get her in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we we and then it it was just kind of like, well, this is, what is what's happening here? Like you're in college, I live in New Jersey. You're you're 20 years old. Like so, it, we kind of like kept in contact for a few years, <laughs> and then. Uh, I guess it was like a year and a half later. Yeah. I on like a whim, I'm like, what are you doing for New Year's? And and like, are you coming up to New Jersey? And she was like, she was like, Yeah, I was like, Oh, cool, you coming down to Princeton? Like kind of like jokingly flirting. And she was like, Okay, sounds good. <laughs> and I'm like, boys, we're canceling the night. <laughs> we had to go out to Billy and stuff. I, and, and, I remember like the day, the the night, like I was gonna leave, and Robbie's like, so are you like actually coming? And I was like, <laughs> yes. Like I, I am like determined to get to Princeton at this point. I already committed to this. Oh my God. So, so we canceled our plans and Josette came to Princeton and uh, she's, she's 21 at this point. So I don't um, know. <laughs> I'm older than that. 22. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 22. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, and, uh, and then, so we, we, uh, we had a great time at new year's and then a few, a few months later after pen relays, the day after pen relays is when I asked her to be my girlfriend. <laughs> uh, also the same day that she found out she had a, a femoral stress fracture yes. and then the rest of her, her, her fourth year was canceled. <laughs> Did you give her your old Barcy Jack and say, you know, we are going steady. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it was a more of a, 
How you doing, baby? Uh, <laughs> so smooth. So smooth. You know what I love? The fact that the creepy stare while talking could have went one of two ways and it went the best way. Like she could have yeah. either been like, uh, I'm not going I'm, to idolizing right this guy because he's a great runner, but he's really creepy. But it ended yeah. up working out in the end. <laughs> so, so yeah. Josette, um, like, did you know of the, you know, the aura in New Jersey of Robbie Andrews? Like, did you know, <laughs> like, but like who he was, like, high school national record holder in a thousand? Did, did, did any of that play play a factor, or were you just like, this is just some some guy who I, I think is, is 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 a cute, or you're like, hey, this is a New Jersey legend. I'm from Jersey, like. I just knew he was an Olympian from New Jersey, <laughs> but I no clue about like your past with the NCA or any, like even in high school. Yeah, she, I didn't know. She hadn't seen any of my races. No, I had to, when we started yeah. dating, I went back yeah. and watched yeah. everything, yeah. but I knew, I mean, I watched him at the Olympics. Like I remember watching him on the TV right. and you at the, when I was at UNC, you raced. Yeah, that's right. He did do a race at, um, NC Raleigh State? or yes. is that NC State, NC but it wasn't State, Raleigh yeah. relays, but, um, and everyone was like, oh, Robbie Andrews is there. And I'm like, he's from New Jersey. Like, and I, yeah. I, um, I like loved that you were from New Jersey. Yeah. Listen, so, so Jersey people say stick together. That, <laughs> that the, the woman who married Robbie Andrews knew less about Robbie Andrews than some old fat schluff like myself <laughs> when, when she met him. All right. But to be fair, she, came- she, she, know, she knows what my chicken farm is like. So, I went to her stomach first. Oh, I, yes. I haven't Listen, cooked for man, you. Hey, that is the best way to a woman's heart is through their stomach. <laughs> I used to go. I didn't go chicken parm. Oh, went, go, yeah. I, go uh, ahead. <laughs> very, um, we were all very excited. We're like, oh, yeah, we're all going. Like all, The entire girls team showed up to hear Robbie talk, and I thought he was very cute. But I remember my teammate, Margie, was like, I think he's only looking at you. And I was like, I'm like, I feel like we're making good eye contact, but I don't really know. And um, it was just really funny because so, then nothing like developed after that right. because Robert went back to New Jersey. I was at Georgetown, but then our paths like just kept ran. Like he came back a few months later to meet the president. And then I ended up seeing you at USA's the next year because I was out in LA with my friend and we drove to watch the Georgetown boys at USA's and Robbie ran USA's and won USA's. So like I kept like re seeing Robbie around and then, um, after we spent New Year's and then he came to visit a few times, we started dating and it's just kind of, it's really crazy how it all um, evolved. And yeah. it's just pretty convenient that we're both from New Jersey. <laughs> so was really? that, was that like short hair, uh, Rob, or was that like long hair, ponytail? Short right? hair. Yeah, it was, it was oh, quick. Long, ah, listen, oh, man. Yeah, very quick cut. I guess sometimes you had like a little bit, like a little mm. bit longer, but it was not your. No, like, was, it like wasn't ponytail, Robbie. I want that ponytail right. back. That was <laughs> legendary. That, that was that the that most was it, man. A polarizing haircut I've ever. There, it's either that where like you got to bring it back, or it's like I'll I'll never talk to you again. I was waiting did. for like man bun, Robbie. Do you know to like line up for 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 one race but you know we we only got ponytail robbie i don't know that was like the quintessential robbie like when that was a quintessential robbie andrews was ponytail robbie just dusting everyone which is funny that i got like when we started dating like i feel like we i got asked a lot about that and i never even knew robbie had a man button like i had to like go back and find (laughs) and find this um which is i'm like oh my god so josette would you approve of the man bun and ponytail coming back no no, let's yeah. come on. We need <laughs> we need Jersey Shore, Seaside Heights, Robbie coming back yes. with his man bun. <laughs> you would have had to do a really good first date to convince. <laughs> you would have loved it. Uh, so we all loved it. Come on, we did. Okay. We did. So oh, I did. go also, ahead, go ahead, Joseph. Uh, yeah. We went to the farmers market, and then someone told Julie that oh Seth yeah, was hanging out with Robbie and. Yeah, we got we got uh we got called out on. We got called out on and, like one of our first dates. <laughs> and Julie Julie was not happy that I was messing around with one of her girls. <laughs> and I'm like, Julie, I don't know how to tell you this, but I already know she's the one. <laughs> and I've known her for two months, but like this is happening. <laughs> Uh, so Julie, I had to win Julie over yes. more, more, even more than like Josette's mom. I yeah, had to she, win Julie, Julie. That's like the hardest thing as a guy, though. It's like, no, I actually like her. Like, stop. Like, I actually, <laughs> don't ruin this for me. I actually want to date her. <laughs> There's no foul play here. I like her. Yeah. yeah this and, is, it was it was so funny though because I remember 
I remember seeing it was uh, Chris Kutowski. He's an assistant at uh, Washington right now. Uh, he was Centrovich's assistant at, at American. Okay. And, um, and we're, we were like, who the heck could have seen this? And I'm like, it was freaking Chris. <laughs> and, and Julie was not happy. But then he's like, I saw Josette with Robbie Andrews. <laughs> but then she she eventually figured out all I wanted was what was best for Josette. And I was all in on helping Josette be a, be the best runner she could be and, and reaching her reaching her potential. And it was after the race that you came. You came to nationals yeah. with me. And that's when like it was like. Robbie, oh, no, she, 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 my she mom. Actually, and uh, my- we, uh, we we actually told that she, she's she's like I was not a a fan at first, but he's a great guy, and I'm so happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she told me in the airport. She's like, okay, I'm yeah. sorry, I get it, <laughs> I get it. We're great together, and I was like, yes. thank. You. And like it, it wasn't like Josette was being coached by a male coach. It was a female coach. So like, you really have to win her over. <laughs> yeah, man, it was. She's just, but that's what a good coach does. She's protecting Absolutely. her group. A hundred percent. And um and then she wanted me to copy Robbie's lifestyle. She was like, Yes, he has the professional lifestyle. Like, that's what you need to be doing. So funny. Idea, yeah, it was um we made a great team. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. when I was coaching on all about Dave, I hated when my athletes were in relationships. I was like, Don't <laughs> do it. Because it's like you get into a fight, you run like crap that day. It's like just break up, just stop, just stop, just come run, worry about that. But it can't go later. the other way though. You get in a fight and you're like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm pissed off, I'm gonna run even faster. It could be. be. Does does Robbie Robbie like plants like he's like all right? I'm gonna do a nothing fight at this time here to get her ready and going because I know that if I do this here, she's gonna run well. (laughs) Oh God! If if only I was that calculated. (laughs) But I mean, but like to me, it's cool the being here in in Jersey that like you guys are a power couple in this sport, like both from New Jersey, and it's like like. It sounds like it didn't matter where Josette was 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 from. Robbie was just focusing on, on on her. She just happened to be from Jersey. I still remember Robbie's line when he was on our, our show last time. He's like, "She was the cutie pie from Tenafly." Yeah, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you tell him the back dude, the story well, for that? Uh, what's his, uh, Ron, Ron Spear? Ron Spears? Does that, do you guys know that name? I've heard of him. Yeah. No. Yeah, he, yeah, he was. I think he was an old gags guy. Was that Sir Walter? Uh, it was down in Sir Walter. Yeah. Um, it was. I think it might have been 2019. I wasn't running, um, because because I was sick and Josette wasn't running, but my sister was running and we were visiting my my family in um in Pinehurst and I just ran into Ron who's who's a great guy and you know he'd always, he'd come to like NJNY practices and um he. He's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, I'm here with my girlfriend. And like, we're watching my sister run. He's like, oh, well, you know, who's your girlfriend? I'm like, oh, it's Josette from, from Tenafly. He's like, no way. You got a cutie pie from Tenafly. Yeah, he's like, no, he's, you know what they say? The cutie pie's from Tenafly. It was so <laughs> funny. And I uh, I, yeah, I wish I, I could have coined that, but uh, I, I stole it from Ron Spears. <laughs> so, Josette, I am saying right now, whenever you get introduced, you need to start bringing, you know, like boxers have like their stage, like their name the games. <laughs> when you get introduced, that meets you need to be Josette, the cutie pie from Tenafly Andrews. <laughs> Had them announce it that way. <laughs> oh, I love it. This is funny that this interview is right now too, because just like uh, the other day, um, we're coming up on my ten year um, graduation from high school, mm-hmm. and um, I got I'm gonna be inducted into the Tenafly Hall of Fame. Oh yeah. Next year. <laughs> so um, my freshman cross country coach called me up um and she let me know that that's going to happen next year so that was really special to just um one like reconnect with her and i couldn't believe that 2024 is going to be 10 years um from graduating high school so hopefully i i come back to tenafly and um coming back from paris hopefully <laughs> so um that it's just it's just really special and um full Funny how, yeah. yeah, it feels full circle and how we're talking about New Jersey and everything. So. so are you being inducted for your running career or for the 14 records that you have on the, uh, <laughs> the wall from elementary school? I mean, it's, 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 high school. it's kind of a tough thing. You know? High school records. <laughs> we didn't get into this. <laughs> and it kind of hurts me when it's, it's like you're talking about 10 so, years. So you don't know. Yeah. It hurts me when you're like 10 years. It's like I've been removed a lot longer than 10 years. Jeez. <laughs> Oh man! So, uh, all right. I have a question for Robbie, and it's kind of a, a little uh, change of pace. Um, how are you feeling um, 
what is your future in running? Are you focusing more now on coaching or like, are, 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 are you coming back? Like, how do you feel? How's your health and what is your situation? Oh, well, th- thank you for asking. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the, it was a rough uh, spring summer for me. Uh, le- so when we moved here, I was really excited to get to altitude because one, we both respond really well to altitude. Uh, and two, I was like, I was, I wasn't sure what, what my running was going to look like, but with, um, with Josette having a lot of teammates and a lot of support, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to focus on my running. And I ended up of course, falling back into, well, I'm just going to keep helping Josette. So I, I was helping pace Josette and Alicia, uh, for, for some of their workouts in the winter. And then come the spring, uh, I started doing some of my own training and then, um, my my planner kind of blew up on me and then a few months after that my achilles blew up on me so the summer was pretty rough um uh it was yeah it wasn't wasn't great uh but now it's been about five weeks now uh ever since i went to the diamond league in china with josette so who knew i needed to fly to china to get my achilles oh my gosh (laughs) um so since then my achilles and planner have been feeling great and uh i'm back up to like i think i got 50 52 miles last week with like good some good running and like some good sprints and uh, some good strides and stuff uh so my running's coming along i don't i don't know what it's going to look like for the rest of the year i'm kind of just enjoying being pain-free right now you know I'm, I'm, I'm by no means calling this a retirement post but it's it's uh if i'm kind of cautiously optimistic about continuing continuing to train at, at like an olympic trials type level uh, i'd love to make one more trials it, it crushed me not being there in 2021 um so I'm I'm kind of cautiously optimistic about about putting um a, a good really good effort towards towards this summer, um, but yes I, I am coaching I'm coaching the Boulder Mountain Warriors uh, out in out here in Boulder with uh, with Melody Fairchild uh, I'm coaching Dathan's son Jude uh, who had a, a monster two mile tonight I, I forget we ran but he was running kind of with the big boys uh, and and uh, Kara and Adam Goucher's son Colt is on the team and Dathan also paced the paced boys the mile. mile yeah. That's yeah, awesome. I think, I think that, that's... His yeah. goal was um they wanted he didn't know if they wanted five minutes or five ten, but he's like, I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and was out on the Niowa track pace in middle, middle yeah. school today because he's like awesome. I think they asked for the I think they reached out and said, like, will any of your athletes pace the boys? And Dave's like, I'll do it. <laughs> Love it. Love it. He's yeah. like, if my athletes will rest, I'll do, I'll take it for them. It, <laughs> it's, it's he truly never runs out of energy. Um <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and and Sarah Vaughn's uh, middle daughter uh, Kalia is on the team, uh, so it's really cool seeing a, a whole bunch of the Boulder, the Boulder or the CU alums and, and their kids on the on the in the running community, and they're they're trusting Melody uh, with their kids and their training. So we're having fun with that, and uh, I'm I'm actually coaching the on the OAC photographer uh, yeah. Colin Wong. Uh, he's he uh, he's only 20, but he's um. So he, he never he didn't really get a college experience with his running because he he came out here to to be a photographer. So I've been coaching him and and we've been having a blast. He's running a five k December second at, at BU, BU and he's he's going for a, a big sub fifteen. Uh, hey. So hey, if he's running in a BU, he might run sub fourteen on that track. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to tell him. But uh, you know, he, he's that uh, track he's, makes you fast. It's unbelievable. So I I think someone else might be running a, a 5K at, at BU uh, yeah. uh, this winter. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how that goes for her. Uh, but yeah, so I, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the coaching side. I'm I'm really enjoying uh, kind of just being pain free when I'm running and kind of kind of doing stuff at my own speed right now. And and um, yeah, it's kind of a different a different type of running right now where I'm not I'm not really I'm not trying to run 343 in the mile. Uh, I'm just enjoying watching Yara do it, uh, but uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm, yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm at the same time. I'm enjoying seeing where I'm at 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 this stage in my life with at this amount of health and et cetera. So it's um it's been a lot of fun uh, being healthy. You know, being injured was was pretty rough, but uh, yeah. I was having so much fun following Josette Summer and all, and and all her teammates' races this summer. It, it's just a it's, it's kind of it's kind of a fun different different time in my running but at the same time i love going to the track and and running fast and feeling good so uh we'll see we'll see how it progresses but um yeah i'm, I'm kind of cautiously optimistic right now see see but what i love is you know like you were hurt and but you like you didn't let that 
interfere with what your wife was 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 doing because yeah. i i feel like that that has to be really really hard like i'm a two-time or you know i've been in the olympics multiple times and i can't do it but i'm going to give everything i have to to, to my wife I'm, I'm not sure that every person would would take that approach or th- th- some people might have the well i should be out there too I'm, I'm happy for you but you know like i can't <laughs> do this so i think it's extremely commendable that that you're like hey yeah i can't do it now I'm all in f- for uh, you. I'm going to go with, with, with every meet to you. And that's just a beautiful thing because I don't know if, if I was at that level and, and tried to have that, that like that like pro mind frame, if I could, you know, take a step back and, and uh, do what was best for my partner. And I think that's beautiful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, you, you, you listeners at home right now, you can't see Joe's that smile, but she's, got, uh, she's got a smile that'll make you do just about anything. Uh, now I, I think so, something about that. It's, it's, um, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I just, I, I really, I just, I have such an appreciation for how lucky I got. And it was my, my, from 2015 to 2017, like looking back on that, I'm just, I'm so happy with, with my running and, and how, how it went that I, all I want is for the person I love the most in this world to, to have happiness like that. And, and she's already had a better three years than I've had in, wow. in that stretch, but it, it's, it's just great to see, to see her continue to pursue her dreams and, and see how far she can go with, with this amazing support that she's been getting. And I'm just happy to be a, a very small part of that. You know, we still believe in you here. And I think like, you know, as long as you could stay healthy, you can make one more good run at it. And, you know, <laughs> but like to just like sum up what Robbie was saying, though, getting old kind of sucks, right? It does because like the training, it's not the same, right? Getting back into it, it's a little tougher. And and it, it's, you know, and I feel for you because, you know, I stopped a lot sooner at being like trying to do anything like running 5Ks and stuff. But it's like, it does get hard as the injuries pile up. And, but I do think like you, your talent level just will get you there because you have a ton of talent. So as long as you can stay healthy, I'm thinking we'll definitely see you at trials. That's I'm, I'm calling that healthy Thank Rob you. is at trials. Means, uh, means a lot to hear that. Thank you guys. Absolutely. So uh, to, to bring it back quick, you know, to this wonderful state that we are all from, <laughs> what do you guys think now of like these high school athletes and like just how incredibly fast they're running? Like, do you think it's because they have better training? Do you think it's the, the shoes? Like, what like what do you attribute to you know like just how fast like like when I was in school granted this was back in the, the mid nineties like <laughs> you know like Mita Chance was a one by the boys like like four twenty you, you were top two or three now you run four four twenty you're maybe in the third heat like like what do you like attribute you're to not getting these- past groups at four twenty well, well, you're well, losing in groups yeah. like right, right. <laughs> you know so yeah. so but, like. What do you guys think that like this is the reason why everything's so fast? Well, I, first off, I got to say we, we mentioned the Group Four team winners um, in Westfield. Uh, we have to bring up the Group Four individual winner, Stephen Cavellos, out of Manalpa, and that's uh, uh, I think he's they got only like his... like like first and third, or like first and fourth, and then that yeah, race. A sophomore, a sophomore uh, Stephen Stephen Clay, uh, fifteen forty nine. I love uh, that I... you still know that. That's incredible. My my dad's still helping out with Manalp, and he's uh, he's very enthusiastic, and they've uh, they've having an incredible year. But yeah, Cavellos Cavellos for winning the Group Four title that hasn't happened much uh, in at Manalp. But I, what I'll say is, I feel like coaches have so much information available to them that the I feel like the coaching has just gotten so elevated over the years. And coaches are making less mistakes, as is how I like to phrase it, where it's like, cause it's easy to train hard. It's really easy to overtrain. And oh, yeah. so I think coaches are just getting smarter, smarter about yes. how to recover. And yes, the shoes play a role in that. Um, but I just think the coaches are, are, I don't want to say they're paying attention more, but I just feel like they, they have a, a routine that that's kind of been tried and true. Um, what, what do you, what do you, how do you, what do you think, Josette? I think it's just a combination of a lot of things. One, like smarter training, mm-hmm. better recovery, mm-hmm. faster shoes, yeah. um, and maybe younger athletes. Also, there's like social media is way more of a bigger thing. They can follow pro runners. Strava. You know, yeah, yeah they, like even just having people to look up to and like inspirations and talk to. I feel like that wasn't much of a thing 
back in the day to be able to do that. So I think it's just like so much access to so many tools. Yeah. So it's the combination of all of that together. And, and, you know, as an old crotchety man who ran at home though in, in the 1990s, the, that, that course is so much smoother now. Like, like there's, <laughs> there's no more roots. There's no more, you know, there's no more. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now. But like, it's, it's crazy. But I, I do think the influx and I'm, surprised now when I hear how many kids who might come from smaller schools aren't even training with our high school coaches. They're getting outside coaching, which, which I don't love, you know, like I, I, I think you should kind of go with where you are, but like, there's so many things like there's, there's kids who are getting people coach them who live in California, who live in new, new Jersey now. So there's such an influx because of all this technology that it's such an easier way to get great coaching from anybody. Exactly. Exactly. Which is yeah, why I, I love those high school coaches who are doing it right, keeping with with their their teams and understanding like you don't have to run hard every day. You need rest and your body needs to recover. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and hopefully this groundswell and, you know, faster times and everything will make the sport more popular at the young ages so it can bubble up. So before we jump out of here. I'm going to ask you, Josette, the same question that we asked Robbie on his episode to end out the show. You're a pro right now. And one of the things that we like to try to do here is try to figure out a way to get more casual people involved in this sport because, you know, the casual fans will drive up more meets, will drive up more revenue, will ultimately get pros like you and a lot of other pros paid a lot more money to the point where, you know, you and Robbie should have to want for nothing, you know, especially after <laughs> Robbie's career and how he represented the United States and what you've been doing the last few years. You guys should be living on easy street, but track pros, unless you're a select few, don't. That's just the reality of it. So if you could sit there, if you had a magic wand and you could flick your wrist and you can try and fix this sport in order to make more casuals enjoy it and get pros paid the pop- proper money, what would you do? Yeah, well, that's like one of the bigger things, even like groups are trying to figure out, like even at our summit um, the other week when on flew out everybody from the company, from like marketing, footwear, apparel, um, the athletes, um, how do we make this sport more popular? And, And like, that's why this past year we put on like the on track night series, which was supposed to be like a series in one in LA, one in Paris one in Vienna, um, like having a series where then also you have the beer garden and the food trucks, you have a concert yeah. getting people excited and putting the marketing into it and the money into it to make it a fun experience for people, but then also making it in a way where it's easier to follow and go along with. And like the goal of that is to have it keep evolving into a track series type situation or where you see with like, the diamond league series where you're getting athletes to go to these races. And that's one of the biggest things is like getting it more easy for people to follow and be a fan, like how it is with football. Like, you know, when the games are going to be the night. Exactly. (laughs) When, when are the diamond leagues going to be, what athletes are going to be there? It's, it's hard with running where things sometimes do come up last minute and people do drop out and that's a turn off for some people, but having a way where it's like a consistent thing and like getting these like really good head to heads at the same races. So I think it's, um, it's going to have to be like the athletes and the companies and the um, meets like really working together to make it a cohesive system where we can have these track series that get people excited and you're having the same athletes racing each other. And maybe there, there's a grand prize at the end, like you were talking about, like doing those series. But um, it's definitely something that us as professionals really want to, like the athletes <laughs> really want yeah. our, sport, our sport to be more popular and to bring more money and get people excited. And it's what the companies are trying to figure out what the best mm-hmm. way is. Ons trying to do their small part about doing these on track mm-hmm. night series and like getting us involved and going and like doing like a red carpet walkout where like you can meet the fans in the beginning. Like you saw the Noah Lyles Peacock yeah. series. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be huge yeah. for our sport. Yeah. And Netflix was following around some sprinters. Yeah. At the the di- yep. Here I was trying to get in the background. Like, hey, <laughs> but, um, that's going to be huge. Like the exposure through the sprints, especially, I think that's going to be absolutely a big thing. And just like 
getting that new network. Like I absolutely loved watching that Noah Lyle series on Peacock. I'm hoping other fans were able to see that and see what he's doing. And um, even, yeah, all of that together, like trying to make this sport more popular. But, you know, but I also think like having it on Peacock though, like it has to be paid for. Like we, like, yeah. we need to find something that's accessible for everyone. Like, like you're just channel surfing and oh, tracks on this here's the on me oh the on circuits on let me throw it on huh and 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 have like 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 shorter meets like like have like an hour and a half window of just finals 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 where everything's fast and and everything's just explosive so that you don't lose the the interest of the watcher who like i don't mind watching that stuff but the casual person be like like or like have have an uh, announcer like like compare it to Everyday layman is like, oh, like Mondo de, de, de Plantis is jumping over a three story house. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, 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 like make it so that people can understand. Like, Ryan Krauser is throwing a 16 pound bowling ball 25 seven, yards. Seven feet, yeah. You know, <laughs> understand and also have easier access to it to really even get a following to it. But. Joe's at, we'll start dating Taylor Swift. <laughs> that will help. Listen, okay? she'll do it. I know she will. I mean, I'll start dating Taylor Swift if it will help <laughs> me. I'll date Harry Styles if, if I have to. Like, I don't care. Like, hey, Harry Styles whatever. does wear dresses and like those long coats, though. <laughs> so, here, so here's one thing that, um, you know, if On does have a meeting that some of our past guests that we've talked to, Sarah Slattery and Eric Sawinski brought up. Sarah Slattery, I think, brought up one that I think we should take as a sport, gambling. FanDuel. If they wanted to bring DraftKings or FanDuel in to promote these, because if they get in, they're going to promote these meets, right? If they can get in and there's an on circuit and it's like DraftKings or FanDuel, jump in with us and here's all the athletes that are going to come. Start doing odds based on their past races. I think if you get gambling involved, you'll get a lot more people in. And then on top of that, Eric Sawinski, you know, the world's greatest pacer, um, he said, you know, what would make it easier for him to just go and make a living, getting a lot of small sponsors and allowing them on the back of their singlets, keeping the front clean. But, you know, a lot of times these big things like, you know, if Nike's doing something, On's doing something, Hoka, they don't want other sponsors. They want them. But like something like that would help the athlete and have other athletes want to come, right? If they say, okay, you could throw six sponsors on the back of your jersey that you guys get. Front has to say whatever, has to say what we want. But on the back, you can go get a two thousand, five thousand, six thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Which I think could get you know athletes of your caliber could go around and get a few of those, right? So it's like I feel like if those are possible suggestions, like gambling and allow athletes to have a certain number of sponsors on the back of their singlets, a certain size, and there we go, so that they're getting exposure, they're making more money, and it won't be on on to pay everybody that's there completely. They can get paid, get over there, so. Those are suggestions from Talking and Ovals from Sarah Slattery and Eric Sawinski, if you want to give them the credit. So yeah. that's just our two cents here. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, but all right, Josette, Robbie, thank you guys so much for coming on. This was awesome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. You, you guys are a pleasure as always. We love hearing about New Jersey, love repping <laughs> New Jersey. Thanks for making us proud. And we, uh, we can't wait to talk to you. Hopefully, maybe let's let's circle back in in like eleven months from now. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, we have a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. I'm cool with that. Listen, great. you guys are welcome whenever you want. Even if you want to text us and like bump your guest, it will be like okay, we'll do it. But uh, <laughs> but no, this was lots of fun. We went a little longer, but we have you know two elites, so we can't end this short and do our normal time. But um, once again. That's Robbie and Josette Andrews. They are the world's fastest married milers. If anybody wants to be coached, if you're in the Colorado area or further, Zoom exists. That's how we're doing this. Please email randrewscoaching at gmail.com. You can get in touch there. Um, Robbie and Josette are extremely accessible. They are not like your you know, big time athletes. Like They're awesome. They will talk <laughs> to everybody. So email if you're interested. And also, Josette, there is a, uh, a code for Coros GPS watches. What is that? Yeah, and you just have to put um, code Josette at checkout and you'll be able to get a free accessory with your watch so you can change, customize the band or get some other fun accessories like a hat or a t-shirt or water bottle. But um, yeah, I love the Coros watch and um, it's which, been which one? 
I've been wearing the Coros Pace 3. That's the newest release one. Um, so I'm a big fan of the Pace 3 right now. And I was wearing the Pace 2 all last year. So um, big fan and it's really reliable and it's been helping me achieve my goals on the rows <laughs> and track. So, yeah. Yep. So go to Coros.com. And then when you check out Josette, J-O-S-E-T-T-E, right? Is that correct? All right. Perfect. You want to spell it right. So spell that in there and you will get the free strap. So 100% go do that. Um, support Koros and support Josette and the Andrews. Uh, once again, we are talking in ovals. Dave, do you have anything to say before we hop out of here? I'm just in, in awe that we have so many tremendous athletes from the state of New Jersey representing this wonderful country that we have. I mean, these are just yeah. two prime examples of the talent that comes from this little small state on the East Coast. Um, it's beautiful and it's an honor to have the world's fastest married milers on. You guys got to coin that. Honestly, yes. we, I mean, that, Dave, that's... we're going to, so we are going to send you guys shirts, but there's going to be talking and ovals on the back, but we're going to send oh, you guys okay. shirts. And at a meet, I want you guys to get permission, like to wear that as a warm up. just like <laughs> walk like uh, on like camera at like a big meet with that, those shirts on. It would make noise. Just like, throwing that out there. <laughs> no problem. I'm going to keep bringing down our average. So yeah, get just, ready. Just, just, I'm to get uh, I gotta get under the four twenty. Robbie's got to start stepping up now to. to I need to like. I need to be yeah. at. <laughs> We're gonna bring it way down. These super shoes gotta help me, man. I gotta. I gotta help us. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Josette's kind of. I got. Point. I got five more seconds in me. Don't worry. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So once again, we are talking in ovals. Uh, if you like what you heard, give a like, share, follow, subscribe, rate five stars, Spotify, and iTunes. Spread this word of mouth. Go find us on the socials at Talking in Ovals. We will be back again next week, as always, with another exciting guest. Um, everybody, thanks for listening. So long.